All right, welcome to Culture Couch Live this week. I've got uh, James, Jared, and Adam. How are we, gentlemen? Hello, Paul. Well, Good thank you, Paul. Again. Is he? Everyone oh. going well? Yeah, I've had a break Very from well. the Culture Couch. I haven't been here for weeks. Yeah, you have. Yeah, no, absolutely. We've brought you back in. So is this the A team or the B team? I can't work it out, Murph. You're the I A team? Or the B team? I think it's the A team. I think I've been getting lots of requests saying uh, for <laughs> People saying, where are, where are you, Merv? We, we haven't got you back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Just yeah. from family members, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> must be mum. Thank <laughs> big hi, Big hi to mum. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go straight into it. Again, as I normally do, I might parable. We've got a question from Peter, and he works in a big multinational company. And he, what he asked about, which was quite an interesting question, is around what are the differences when you're working with companies in terms of culture code, how you set up your culture, how you respect, you know, crossed international borders so i thought it was a, a fascinating question so I, mean, if I, I might start with you because mm. when you've been in this business now for 20 25 years and worked with mm. a lot of companies that have been across international borders so what do you, what's your first observations around that that conversation that question uh when you work with uh, multinational companies with um offices right across the world and you're putting together teams um from different nationalities and different countries um, uniting them with a culture code becomes even more important. Yeah. Because if you just put a group of people together with different backgrounds, uh, different life experiences, different cultures, then what happens is they all come to that with their own different perspective, which is normal. But but it's even the the perspectives are even are even more varied and um, wider. So taking the time early on to create your culture code, particularly behaviours, getting the group to sort of agree to, okay, when we interact with each other, this is how we're going to do it, becomes so important. And it it takes, it might take a couple of hours at the beginning, but that time is so well worth it, like from that point on. And, and Adam and I worked with the team this morning. Um, right. And it was really interesting that like we, we, Adam and I had to get up at four o'clock to begin the session because there were people literally through Europe, yeah. America, Asia, Australia. So um, even, even the time zones piece is interesting, yeah. but, but more importantly, getting the group to unite and commit to an agreed set of behaviours makes moving forward and working much easier. And on, on that, Adam, I mean, it's, it's a great point because Tell the truth, if that's one of your behaviours, is tell the truth no matter what country it is, isn't it? So it's a really good point, isn't it? Because sometimes you probably focus too much on where you're from and, and your background and all those sorts, of, which, are, which are relevant. And we'll get to that from a personality point of view. But a culture code, when you're drilling down to actions, as we call them, the, the behaviours, shouldn't matter where you're from, should it really? No, it doesn't. But so often, you know, perhaps we don't appreciate that we're operating in different contexts, different time zones, different spaces from home, in an office or not. And so having that empathy to understand where everyone's coming from is yeah. so important. And that's to Jared's point is around the code. It helps you communicate that with good empathy. And I think one of the things I really learned from Jared 10 years ago was be very careful with humor yeah. in those sorts of occasions, be direct and kind, but sometimes humor can be misconstrued because it, it can get in the way of the truth getting through. And yeah. I think that's a good point, Mac. I mean, you've worked in America and, and I'm obviously here now and been married to an American and that's probably the thing. I mean, I guess the culture is really understanding the communication, which gets back to the culture of the country, but also personalities, isn't it? Because, you know, you and I, we touched on this before we, we came on. Americans are very literal. You know, if you say something to, to Adam's point, they'll, be, they'll believe you, you know, so we don't, they don't have that. So that's probably a really big part of the workshop, isn't it? Understanding as we're setting up our culture code, as we're going through a performance by design system, how you communicate that system. Yeah, look, I think uh, Jared touched on it, perspective and perception, I suppose, is the other thing. So um, moving from Australia, my first uh, step out of Australia was into the UK. Yeah. And 
you know, you bring your sense of humor, your Aussie sense of humor, but you've got to sort of temper that. You've got to be aware that they're expecting maybe sometimes you're going to be an Aussie larrikin. So if you want to get a serious point across or yeah. engage seriously in uh, in the development of the culture, you've just got to temper that. Going across um, to America after the UK, you needed to be far more circumspect about using humor. Absolutely. So yeah. it's, a, it's an awareness thing, Rosie, and behaving accordingly it doesn't mean that tell the truth if that's the behavior is any different. It's just yeah. the way that you achieve that outcome. Your behavior needs to adapt and or modify to meet the um, meet the rest of the group. Yeah, and I know, and I know, Murph. One of our favourite parts, and you've been doing it for a long time, is is the profiling. Yeah, is that is that any more relevant across borders, or is it or is it again something similar to the culture code, um, and and the personalities just become as relevant as if you're doing a, a, a workshop in Australia or, or more relevant? I guess that's the question. Um, yeah, I think that's I think it's the same relevance, Rizzy. I think. <clears throat> understanding the people in the team, how they prefer to behave is that it's obviously very important and we put a lot of emphasis on it, but I don't think it's any more um, relevant or important um, than working with other team, you know, your normal teams. I think, yep. I think uh, to James's point there and, and Adam's point as well, there are some fundamentals that, <clears throat> You must put in place, and and some of those are using language that people can understand. Yeah, so, yeah, <clears throat> and even talking um, a little bit slowly. Like I know that I can talk really quickly, and then it becomes really hard for people to understand what I'm saying. So, yeah. and <clears throat> also understanding that you that, that you need to perhaps slow down so people can understand your accent. Um, yeah. you use words that people who who speak English as a second language will understand. Um, yeah. And then, and then, as I said, the, the behavioural framework becomes really important because they're our agreed behaviours as a team and everybody wants to be respected and feel like they belong. So if we can create that sort of unity through the behaviours then yeah, right. and we communicate in a way that others can hear, then we, we, we can build this really, really powerful multicultural, multinational team. And I think, Adam, we talk about a lot, and, and you're doing the coaching now one-on-one and, and been involved in that for a while and, and had some really senior positions. But one of the most important things for leaders is self-awareness, and that's fundamentally what Murph's talking about Yeah, for, for the facilitator. But not only for the facilitator, if you're pulling together you know, an, an international executive team, whoever's pulling it together needs self-awareness anyway. And that's, and, and that's a really good point around how do I speak, how do I dress, how do I, you know, um, turn up my body language, all those sorts of things. But that's that comes back to the self awareness of the leader, doesn't it? Oh, so true. It it's like an autopilot on a plane, right? You, you need to keep it in line. Your yeah. self awareness. I find that mine. I need to always be thinking about self awareness because I can drift into my own thoughts and actions and just stay really present and aware of of how I'm coming across. And I think one of the great tools that I got from performance by design years and years ago was the insights discovery profiling tool. Now there are others. This just happens to be the best one that I've done. Yeah. I read this report and I was astounded by how well it told me about myself. You know, yeah. it was just incredible. And then by virtue of that, what it told me about others, that yeah. others are coming from different perspectives and how to be aware of that in a more skillful way and to speak to people in a more empathetic way, not just so it's what I'm saying that gets through, but what they need to hear. And it's that self-awareness piece is, I think for me, a constant work in progress. Yeah, I think, and I think oh, sorry, Rizzi, I was going to just yeah. jump in there. I think yeah. <clears throat> if you're leading a multinational or multicultural team, that become, your self-awareness becomes really important yeah, because, because yeah. you, because we all bring our own cultural um, experience and history with us. You, you can't not. And yeah. so stepping back and having a really clear look at yourself and saying, hey, what what might I be bringing to the table that might not be helping me as a leader of this team um, based on my on where I grew up, you know, um, my experiences. So, so I think that's really important, Adam. Right, vitally important, and, and more important than leading a team from the same um, 
uh, country or culture because you, you have that innate understanding of, of others from your area. I think also too, again, we were really talking about the fundamentals of the PBD system, aren't we? To make, I mean, asking questions because, you know, if you've got someone from a different um, country and, and as Murph said, Murph suddenly talking a bit quick or made a, an Aussie joke or whatever, the room goes a bit more quiet or half the room's quiet or whatever. One of the things we would say as a normal tool within our workshops is bring those people in anyway. Maka, did you understand? Sorry, did you understand that? Do you want me to slow down? Yeah, how how did you feel? So asking questions becomes again super important as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and building as best you can, you know, that psychological safety into your yeah. environment where because you, the more that you can get the stories from the people within the group, and that can be hard, hard culturally too. Sometimes it's a bit more closed. You know, people are a bit more closed in terms of their their uh, attitude towards storytelling, but deepening your relationships through storytelling and understanding from where people come yeah. their backstory is so important and can build for a uh, sorry make for the building of a very deep and well-trusted team so but that it, that has its own challenges um in terms of extracting those stories yeah yeah again that's a relationship piece we would say Absolutely. is part of the system anyway so look guys hopefully that's a really good assessment from peter i think the question was from peter um we deal with them a lot um but again, Murph, I think you made the really important point. It's probably, we always say it's really important, but it's probably more important, those behaviours. Really simple, actionable things. I can do that. Mac can do that. doesn't matter where we come from, where yeah. we're from, what we do. And it's you do. Super important. I was going to say, you do have a good laugh as well, by the way, like, because because people, people do misinterpret each other. So I've been fortunate enough to work at a, uh, an EPL team, and I think there was 16 different cultures in the team. Yeah, and so the miscommunication between the team can be really funny as well. Like, and that, and that, and that's part of that building the camaraderie. Like, you you yeah, do you, you do actually have a yeah have a good laugh and a good joke about when people get it wrong. I think I think that's part of um not taking not taking ourselves too seriously when you and understanding that there will be some miscommunications, but. But let's enjoy it and have it and have a good time and 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 correct people as we go in a respectful way. But but let's let's have a good laugh when when it does pop up. Yeah, and that's, and that's that the whole thing is that's the storytelling, the yeah. relationship building, understanding, the self awareness. It's probably encapsulating <clears throat> everything we've said. You know what happens in the work play, workshops, yeah. providing it's done in a respectful way. We start to learn about those communication skills. Geez, that that was that's not funny to us, but it's funny to them. Okay, so it's it's actually quite um, enjoyable when you move through the process, isn't it? Yeah. Really, and it, bring, it brings yeah. a huge depth to the team. Like you know, have like, even this morning, Adam. Like we had people um, from oh, oh, I won't I won't name the countries, but but from you know countries that are going through really difficult times at the moment, and and just listening to their stories, it builds this enormous empathy and depth to the group. Yeah. And yeah, so, you, yeah. yeah, so it, it can absolutely be a major strength if we if we capitalise on it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Jared, guys, thanks a lot. That. Appreciate it. Adam, do you want to jump in? Oh, last just, just mate, briefly, mate. just briefly to say that, you know, in these sessions, I often watch trust being formed. Yeah, 100%. And built. And it's it's so precious. You know, that's where you can get clear yeah. understanding of communication on your code reward the things that support that code, questioning the things that don't. And as Jared said, if misinterpretations happen, trust that the intent isn't wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's just that there may have been some accidental interpretation on the way that isn't right. But when you've got trust in place, you've got your code, you can yeah. deal with those things really well in a positive way. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Uh, good finish, mate. Well done. But I'll let yeah. you... That's Take good. That that's, that's really good. That's really Thank good, you. Adam. Well done. Yeah, excellent work. Oh, hang, hang on, sorry. I might see, I might see if I've got a an here an emoji. Oh, here we here we go. Hey, oh, high tech. <laughs> high tech. I wish I could do. I wish I could do one of them, but I'm not that smart, Murph. So, oh, yeah. hey, listen, thanks to Peter and the question, <laughs> and well done, guys. Thanks to Adam. Thanks, Murph. Thanks, Macca. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bruce. Um, and Thank we will you, see Paul. everyone again next week on the Culture Cows Live. So, thanks a lot. <laughs>